Hello everyone and welcome to another video. This is the BK Precision Board Tester Model 560A. Now I use this from time to time in my shop to test chips. Even though it says it's a PC board tester, it really is just a fancy chip tester. It can go in and it can compare things with devices that are running on a circuit board. Uh, but like the HP logic comparators, you're going to end up with situations where you might have pins connected to a shared bus or to ground or power, you know, tied high or tied low, in, in which you, know, you might not always be able to get this thing to test or compare like you would if you just went ahead and pulled the, uh, the chip out of socket. But even with that, I really don't use this for that. I've got the HP logic comparator. It's small, it's easy, it's handheld, and that works great on the bench. This sits in, on a, another bench in my shop and if I have a chip that I'm concerned about that I can't test with something else then I'll come over here. This is great for small RAMs like 2114s, 2148s, 2149s, etc. Uh, it won't do the separate I.O. ones like the 2101s but still it, it, uh, it's a very simple to use board tester or component tester and it's got a socket on it, two different ones. This one is going to be for the ribbon cable, so if you wanted to hook it up to a chip that's on a circuit board. Now this won't power a circuit board, so you'll need to have a, a power source for that one. But it's real simple, it just plugs in right here into the socket, and then we have chip clips of different sizes. This one just happens to be the largest one that, that it'll support. Now I've got smaller ones. When you go to find these, they don't always come with the cables. I got lucky and found this for a song on eBay, or not eBay, uh, local Craigslist. I picked it up for about $150 in the box. Now, for this one, it came with all the cables. But if you need to make cables, it's real simple. You just need to have the chip clips that have the pins on them that you can slide the little cable connectors over. And if you're looking for a 14 or 16 pin, it just simply up justifies or left justifies on the connector so when you plug it in that the ribbon is going to be towards the top now this is the same for this socket when you have smaller chips they will slide in to where the notch is upwards this way now this one is something that you can control from a PC it has a serial port on the back you can connect it up and you can give it commands and it also is expandable in that there is a cover here that can be removed and then you have different sockets that you can use for custom programs that you would write to test things yourself. So that makes it real easy if you want to go in and, and do some tests on, on custom boards. Now I mainly use this just for testing the IC chips. And if you follow my repair logs, you'll see where I repaired a Donkey Kong board just yesterday. And with that one, my Fluke 9010A, the, the CPU uh, exerciser, just would come up and give me a bus error. It was saying that the data bit one was short. It was tied high and that was preventing the CPU from ever coming up. So in order to find that you, you have to go in and look and see what all is touching that data bus. And there's a lot of chips on a Donkey Kong. You got a 74 LS 373. You got a few 74 LS 240s that are uh, connecting you to the outside world for your buttons and sticks and, and switches. Then you also have the memories, whether they're the EEPROMs, which those are easy enough because you can just pop those ROMs out of socket, but you also have the 2114 RAMs. And I was getting down to where I was either going to have to desolder all the 74 LS240s or the 2114 to try and find which one was tying the bus high. So I decided to start with the 2114s, brought them over here one by one, and lo and behold, two of the three that were tied to the data bus on that particular set of bits were bad. Now for this I can come over here and I can and you can see the different buttons. So we have uh, device test and compare, board test and compare, is it out of circuit, in circuit, are we testing TTL or CMOS? We have different input levels that we can give it, different modes we can put this in. We can also do loop tests if we want to just sit here and burn test the component. Now we have buttons, we have a numeric keypad here to type in the, the chip number and then we can scroll through the entries and see what we have. For libraries, we have 7400 series logic, 4, 4014 series logic, then we have memory chips, uh, 8 series logic, and 9000 series logic. So if we scroll back over to memory, I can just simply type in 2114, enter, 
and it's ready to test. And I can press the big test button and it'll do its thing. And in this case, we can see that this particular chip failed at address 0000. So this is what told me that the 2114 that was in that Donkey Kong board was bad. Made it real simple to go through and determine that I needed to replace two of the chips that were tied to the low bits on the uh, data bus and then the board would boot up to a flashing set of numbers, you know, the, the player one and player two scores on the screen. So that tells me the CPU is crashing. So go in and, and run the fluke. At this point, it will run because the data bus that was stuck high is no longer stuck high. And I found that one of the chips in the uh, addressing space on the upper bits was bad. So replace that, board booted, game played, problem solved. But this is a nice device that makes it very easy to go through and determine if you have bad logic, bad RAMs. Uh, it's not cheap. You'll pay a few hundred dollars for it on eBay. If you are patient, just like everything else, patience, patience, look and keep an eye out for these things, and you'll come across one that'll be priced better. Like I said, I picked this one up off the local Craigslist for about 150 and then uh, if you are looking on eBay, look at the Buy It Now fresh listings and see if somebody listed one for less than what it should be going for and pull the trigger on it if you see it. It's very, very well worth having in the shop. And with that, I'd like to say thank you.